Operation Warp Speed, the Trump administration's newest attempt to quell the rising fear and frustrations of the American people to speed up the production of a vaccine for the disease COVID-19. America always has to have a brand for everything, doesn't it? It, it? it can't just do something. You know, America always has to come up with like a catchy name or a hashtag or a viral marketing campaign, which, you know, in the face of a, a pandemic should be outlawed. You know, anybody that is attempting to go viral on purpose is probably a dick and should be quarantined off the internet. But, you know, this need to have a gimmick is very important to Americans. How else can we put it on a t-shirt or a hat and wear it proudly at rallies where America can carry on the traditions of disparaging minorities with hypocritical belief systems? Now, when it comes to the vaccine development, I'm, I'm fairly certain speed isn't the prerogative. You know, creating a vaccine should be like sex. You know, you shouldn't rush it. There should be a little courting, which is like the research. You should have a little foreplay, which is what the trials and testing are. Much like condoms, you want to make sure there's safety involved. Consent is important, and that comes from knowing that there is a mutual understanding of what's happening by both party, which includes educating the people on what the vaccine is, how it was created, and making sure that we're all going to have a good time with it. And much like good sex, it should come with no strings attached. Like, you shouldn't use sex as a point of control or power or profit, just like you shouldn't try to use this vaccine as a point of control, power, and profit. It should be free and available to everyone once it's developed, just like sex should be free and available to everyone that consents to it. Nobody has ever been impressed by how quickly you can come up with a vaccine or sex another person. But in the age of social media and drive throughs we demand instancy. That's why the most common phrase at a Starbucks drive through is, it's been 43 seconds, why am I not burning my lips on a mediocre, non-fat, half-soy, 22% vanilla, 30% hazelnut latte? I am paraphrasing, but of course, but, but I think you guys get it. Now, Operation Warp Speed is set to have 100 million vaccinations produced by November and up to 300 million by January. And back in March, we were on a 12 to 18 month timeline as predicted by global experts. Even Dr. Fauci, the White House Commandant of Science, which I do believe is the official title, he said that he's willing to forego the trials and go right into production to meet the deadline. I mean, that's like raw dogging someone at an Applebee's bathroom just because they rubbed up against you at the bar, right? Everybody is going to get sick one way or the other because nobody took the time to do things properly. But even the notion of vaccination itself is a controversial topic. There is a growing contingent in America about people denying vaccines. The group known as anti-vaxxers have taken to the internet and have made bold statements about vaccines causing a litany of diseases and even increased death rates, despite the fact that we've seen time and time again that the benefits of vaccines outweigh the risks when, well, you know, when they're produced with proper precautions and trials in place and not at warp speed. If I may get nerdy for a second, you know, even the USS Starship Enterprise, when it went to warp speed to stop the Borg from invading the planet Earth, they lost a bunch of ships. You know, it wasn't until they paused and executed a well-formulated plan by working together was the Borg defeated so that they themselves could achieve warp speed for the future. So we have to ask, why would people deny the benefits of vaccination? And, you know, why would they do something like that? And there are a few psychologists that have done studies to find that answer. And there are various 
factors involved. Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there rolling your eyes to the back of your head going, Krish, Krish, it's just because they're dumb, plain, and simple. Okay, and my response to that is, you are not helping. Okay, I suggest rolling your eyes forward and listening rather than being condescending. And before we go forward, I do want to say that I'm going to refer to these people as vaccine deniers instead of anti-vaxxers. You know, I think the term anti-vaxxer creates a bit of a harsh aura around them. The prefix anti and the presence of the double X in their name it kind of makes it sound like they're the epidemiologists of the Legion of Doom. Okay, if you didn't get that reference, I will give you a moment to pause the podcast and call one of your nerd friends to explain that reference, and perhaps also the reference I mentioned earlier. And if you did get that reference, congrats. This podcast has always been for you. Okay, so like I said, going forward in this piece, I'm going to call them vaccine deniers. Now, one of the factors is that these vaccine deniers are prone to looking at only the negative factors and overestimating risk. This means that these folks are more likely to look at a story of a child having a seizure after getting vaccinated, despite no evidence suggesting that it was the vaccine that caused said seizure, seizure, but concluding exactly that. They aren't asking the questions to to confirm whether their assumptions and hypothesis are true. They operate at warp speed to conclude that vaccines caused seizures, which led to autism and so on and so on and so on. But the question should be asked, you know, what was the medical history of this family and the child? You know, what what, what are some other factors that could have been in play that caused the seizure? What 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 caused the seizures in the first place? Was it because the child's parents conceived said child in an Applebee's bathroom? Vaccine deniers are also looking for confirmation bias. This is a phenomenon where people will ignore or decline information that counters what they want to believe. It's no different than a good Democrat believing that Joe Biden is a competent presidential candidate that isn't failing cognitively and has had terrible policies and legislation that led to the rise of Donald Trump. Perhaps Operation Warp Speed could also be the name of a study that finds the exponential rate of decline in Biden's brain. Look, in the same faction, vaccine deniers look at any data showing them the large benefits of vaccines as a false flag, and they go back to the stories of harm created by vaccines. And most vaccine deniers have a huge distrust for anyone or anything that is willing to take any level of freedom away from them even if it's as intangible as logic or kindness. They usually also have a fear of blood or needles and believe in hyper-individualism. In addition to all this, uh, human beings are also shit at statistics. I mean, 48% of people know that. Our decisions are made on the fact that we are terrible at assessing the, the statistics of risk. Humans are way more concerned with shark attacks and coconuts falling on their heads than driving to work, all of which have the same level of risk. I mean, 23% of people know that. And the the rest think that the world is 100% in the Sharknado universe. These traits lead to folks in the vaccine vaccine denial or anti-vaxxer communities to, you know, they, 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 the folks that believe all this stuff, they, they lead right into these communities. And then by shutting out any other information, they secure themselves in an information vacuum. Once they are in that position where lack of trust in any authority that might infringe on their freedom is securely at play, the Dunning-Kruger effect takes place. Now, if you don't know what the Dunning-Kruger effect is, because I didn't, it's the phenomenon that makes people think that they know they have more knowledge with less information. This creates an effect where they double down on their one-sided viewpoint and denial of anything that doesn't confirm their biases. This makes them believe they are superior to scientists, 
researchers and doctors which sucks because we've all at one point felt like our college degrees were just hundred thousand dollar pieces of paper with romanesque fonts on it but these vaccine deniers are making doctors face that anxiety with the help of dunning and kruger Look, we don't need a bunch of sad, anxious doctors right now, okay? We need ones that are going to be able to help their patients because that's what they set out to do with their $100,000 pieces of paper with Romanesque fonts. So, what do we do about this situation? Well, one suggestion that Dr. Stephen Novella of the publication Science-Based Medication suggests is that we marginalize these folks by which he means to diminish their thoughts and make them irrelevant from the conversation and possibly also mock the shit out of them. The problem with that is that it won't solve anything, primarily because if we are to really stop the spread of this new virus, we are going to need everybody on board with the vaccine. Calling someone a dipshit or just even diminishing their viewpoints from the collective discourse is going to push them deeper into their biases. Okay, think about it this way, right? When I was a kid and my mother would tell me to drink milk, I would say no because I didn't like milk. Now, my mother could have called me stupid for not drinking the milk, but I didn't think I was stupid. So why would I listen to my mom about the milk, right? After all, she's wrong about me. That means that she's probably wrong about the milk too. But after my mother explained that the milk would help me grow taller and help me become a stronger kid, I was more inclined to tolerate the milk. And later I would even discover chocolate milk, which I think we can all agree is the ultimate form of milk. Rose milk comes at a very close second. Vaccine deniers don't think that they're doing something wrong or that they're stupid. Rather, quite the opposite. They believe that they are helping their families and their children. So therein lies the answer. If we can educate the kids, we might be able to get the kids to talk to their parents about getting vaccinated. If the kids' individuality is important and they want to get vaccinated, wouldn't the parents have to grant that child its freedom to make that decision? Now, Dr. Novella does propose this as a method as well. And I'm more fond of this than the dipshit methodology. By the way, I should also mention that I do enjoy the science-based me medicine publication as they have pretty good articles on their site, despite my agreements with one or two things that they've said. But of course, none of these arguments are even applicable if the vaccine is rushed into production without trials and testing to ensure its safety. Right? Dr. Fauci's need to meet this January deadline seems as misguided and led by fear as the vaccine deniers themselves. And if the expectation is that people will, will stay still with limited access to the outside world till January of 2021 with no prospects of an income, no rent or mortgage freezes, the Trump administration truly doesn't understand how human operates. Okay, look, look. People are freaking out about haircuts and going back to being wage slaves, and that's only after two months. Do you really think eight months is going to end this peacefully? Besides, if the vaccine does come out by November and is giving people more complications and causing more issues, it's only going to perpetuate the confirmation bias of the vaccine deniers themselves and increase their risk overestimation. Why would a scientist want to do that? It doesn't make any logical sense, and we should be asking Dr. Fauci to reconsider this warp speed science. Dr. Fauci should be advocating for rent, mortgage, and debt freezes mixed in with universal basic income and better treatment of essential workers as well as a Medicare for all treatment plan so we can all have a calmer populace so science can have the right amount of time to produce a valid and safe vaccine. And now, are vaccines perfect? No, they're not. And we should be pushing the scientific community to create better vaccines. And the scientific community shouldn't be driven by profit motives of sociopathic sweater-wearing billionaires who only want to increase their bottom line and stock portfolios as quickly as possible. Look, science builds on itself. So if we can make sure that profit motive and money don't impede on scientific advancements, 
we can probably get through this pandemic as a healthier species. The bonus would be that we'd see uh, how much more we can accomplish when money isn't used as a limiter and a point of social control. Without a clear treatment and economic plan, with an incremental reopening of the country's small businesses and recreational activities, a, a vaccine or really any thought of normalcy are meaningless. If we don't have an economic plan to help the working class of America, then we might not get to a vaccine before pure chaos erupts. A treatment plan that isn't fixated on profit motives will probably be the transitional steps we need to get us back on our feet. Then in 2021, if there is a vaccine that's not tied to another profit motive, we can ensure to keep this virus at bay. After that, the only thing we'd have to worry about is the pandemic of people fucking in an Applebee's bathroom. Announcements. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that we are going to be doing some virtual live stand-up comedy shows called The Citizen Revolution. They are going to be Friday nights at 9 p.m. Uh, the very first one is Friday, May 8th. Uh, tickets are limited for these shows, so the May 8th one is almost sold out, but like I said, we're pretty much doing them every single Friday, so May 8th, May 22nd, June 5th, June 12th, June 19th, those are some of the dates that are coming up, so if you can't make the May 8th show, uh, grab your tickets for one of these other shows coming up. You can go to my website, krishmohan.com, that's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N, to grab your tickets and uh, come hang out. Uh, very important to get those tickets because those tickets are how I'm going to be able to communicate with you um, about uh, the login and the password to get into the show. Why is that important? Because uh, I will, that makes sure that unwanted visitors don't enter the show and ruin everybody's good time. The tickets are only five bucks. Uh, you can donate a little bit more if you choose to, but it is absolutely not necessary. Uh, and I'm limiting them to 20 per show so that it doesn't overload the virtual showroom and make the show all glitchy. Uh, that's why there's limited spots. But if you are somebody that has attended one of these shows and wants to attend a different show, like you, let's say you attend the May 8th show and you want to attend the May 22nd and the June 5th show as well, uh, you totally can because all of these shows are going to be different. They're going to have a couple of similar elements to them, a couple of similar jokes that, that'll be uh, evolving throughout the, sh throughout, the, uh, throughout the series. But a lot of the segments in the comedy show, the Citizen Revolution comedy show, is going to be different. It's going to be current events based. It's going to be historical anecdote based. It's going to be uh, celebrating a, a, a certain strike or labor movement. So there's going to be different, there, there's going to be some interchangeability to it. Each show is going to be a little bit, uh, ha have a little bit of uh, uh, mixed media, dynamic elements to it, interactive elements to it. So if you would like to, you can attend more than one shows and get a completely different experience at every single show. So uh, once again, Go to krishmohan.com, grab your tickets now, and uh, and come hang out with me. It'll be really great to to see you guys, hear you guys laughing in the showroom, uh, because you can, uh, if you haven't there, go to my YouTube page, um, and you can check out some of the clips that I've uploaded from the test show, uh, and uh, uh, check out what what the the the, the feel of the show is really going to be. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also uh, become a sustaining member. By becoming a sustaining member, you get a free ticket to every single one of these virtual shows. Uh, you can become a, a sustaining member on Patreon or directly on my website. Uh, you can also just make a one-time donation if that is more feasible. Um, you can also check out prior episodes of this podcast, Forkful of Noodles, Road Reflections, and the dispatch, uh, and uh, you can download all of my comedy albums, which on Bandcamp are now available as pay what you want. You can do a ton of stuff on my website. Go to krishmohan.com. That's K R I S H M O H A N.com and uh, check out all things Krishmohan. Uh, I hope you.